All right, next one. Abiding in the discomfort of blank, right? No, there's more. <laughs> Abiding in the discomfort of understanding is overrated. Remember that one? And I don't know anything, meaning your brain cannot give you the full story. Most of you who've been around for a while, you got this one, finally. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> Remember, this is the most angry mail we've ever gotten. Is when we said, I don't know anything. Emails came out of the woodwork. Don't tell me I don't know anything. People were pissed. We're like, oh, it's working. Veronica was like, ah! We're like, we were excited. She was freaking, this was a couple years back. She could not handle that. That was hard for her. Abiding in the discomfort of I don't know anything and the emails that came with it. Um, again, I can't think my way out of this. I can't control. I can't clamp down. I can't limit my life that way. I refuse to only have what my thoughts can give me by themselves. There's a ceiling. You've reached it, right? You guys know what we mean. <laughs> Next one. Seeking clarity and Setting aside my addiction to certainty. It's extraordinarily honest right there to put the word addiction in. Addiction is a, tri is a triggering word. And a lot of people would be very afraid to use the word addiction with a relation to themselves, period. But she put, seeking clarity and setting aside my addiction to certainty. The idea that in order to do something, I have to be sure it's going to work out. Oof. That's a tough one because you're never going to get anything done that way. And to seek clarity rather than that certainty idea. The thing about clarity and certainty, just as a quick reminder, is that clarity is in the moment, right? That's the thing. Is you want certainty because you want to know it's going to last over time. You want to know it's going to be the same tomorrow. You want to feel like, okay, I can count on tomorrow because that thing that's fake certainty. It doesn't exist, but you look for it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Clarity is in this moment. What is true now? What am I clear about right now? It's all you get. It's a lot if you're not thinking that it falls short of certainty. See, if you think you can have certainty, which you can't, but if you haven't bought into the idea that you can't, so you think you can have certainty, clarity doesn't measure up. Because clarity only lasts for this moment or this five minutes. So it doesn't measure up. And so you stop thinking it's a good thing. You don't let it have its, its importance. But if you give up on the idea that there's any such thing as certainty, then clarity becomes this amazing thing that you're so excited you have and you feel so enthused by, I have clarity instead of, oh, I still don't have certainty. And clarity is just sitting there. Just sitting there, it's kind of like, you know, in, in high school where, where the girl really likes the boy and the boy keeps looking past her to other girls, you know, and then eventually he notices her. <laughs> Certainty or clarity is like the girl who would be the perfect match for him. And he's looking here and looking there and looking here and she's just going, I'm right here the whole time. That's the energy of certainty and clarity. You're looking out there for certainty, certainty, certainty. And the whole time, clarity is just waiting to show you its goods. But it can't show it to you if you're constantly overlooking it in favor of something that doesn't exist. This is the survival instinct has you, has you hoodwinked. The survival instinct says, look for certainty, look for certainty, look for certainty. Oh, that clarity thing, oh, to get that, we have to be in the moment. And if we're in the moment, it's too scary because we're not planning or protecting, or remembering. We're just, what, having clarity? How's that any good? The survival instinct don't like clarity. It don't like the moment, and it don't like clarity, because clarity lives in the moment. Get us away from there, 